brothers and sisters, welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you're blessed today. Welcome back to another session of our Torah Tidbits, where today we will be talking about strange fire. What is it? Can we engage in strange fire in our lives today? Or was it just something for the time of the prophets? Is it something that can affect us in today's society? We're going to talk about that. So we're going to be reading today from Leviticus chapter 10. So let's get started. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before Yahuwah, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from Yahuwah and devoured them and they died before Yahuwah. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that Yahuwah spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people will I be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said unto Aaron and unto Eleazar and to Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people, but let your brethren the whole house of Yasharal bewail the burning which Yahuwah hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of Yahuwah is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And Yahuwah spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Yasharal all the statutes which Yahuwah hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. Okay, so what we have here is a story of Nadab and Abihu, who were Levites, um, priests unto the Most High. They were ministering before the Most High in the temple, in the tabernacle that had been um, created, built in the wilderness. And so as they're administering incense and fire before the Most High, something went wrong and strange fire, the Bible describes it as strange fire was issued before that was offered up before the Most High and wrath went out of the Most High and they were destroyed, they were killed. And so let's look at that word strange. And the strong concordance, it's the word zor. It's H2114, and it's a verb which means strange. It means stranger, estranged, away, gone out, another place. It means to become a stranger or to be strange, to be loathsome, uh, to be a prostitute or a harlot, to be estranged or to be alienated. Okay, something that's profane, something that's gone away from something, from some sort of center or some beginning point. Okay, so the fire that was offered by Nadab and Abihu was strange to the Most High. It was something that was different from what he anticipated. So when the Most High agreed by his presence to be in the tabernacle and to abide in the tabernacle with the people, he initiated a fire. He started a fire. And when the priests were to offer up sacrifices to the Most High, they were always supposed to take from the fire that the Most High ignited and use that fire to burn the incense and to burn the the burnt offerings and things of that nature. Well, apparently, somehow or another, Nadab and Abihu used a fire that did not come from that source. They did not take from the source of the fire that the Most High had ignited. They used another source. Either they brought in fire with them 
or they ignited their own fire once they began the process of offering up this incense with the uh, on, on the fire of the Most High. And so wrath went out of the Most High and they were destroyed. Childless, they were destroyed. So they were cut off. And when Aaron heard and realized that his sons had died in the service of the Most High because they had done something wrong, he answered not a word. He said nothing. He held his peace, the scripture says, because he knew and Moses told him, if you complain, if you whine, if you moan, if you bewail any any of this that's happening, judgment is going to fall on you. It's going to fall on the whole camp. So you have to hold your peace and you have to accept the Most High's judgment that it's just and it's fair and you cannot complain about it. So Aaron held his peace and Moses warned the congregation to not react in any way to this news thus the judgment of the most high would fall upon the whole nation and upon those who were compl complaining by their emotional outburst and by um, their emotional response so this the question then is is that what happened that led to the strange fire how could they have made such a huge mistake in offering up strange fire before the most high well there's a hint as to what may have happened in verse 9. In verse 9, the Most High, we'll start at verse 8. It says, And Yahuwah spake unto Aaron. So the Most High is speaking directly to Aaron and telling him something. He's saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Now it appears that this is the first time that Aaron is being is receiving this commandment. I can't confirm that it is the first time, but it seems as if it is. And if it's not the first time, then it's certainly a reminder that the Most High is giving to Aaron that he nor his descendants, the Levites, are to drink wine or strong drink when they are serving in the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they die, because it makes them make bad decisions. It makes them make mistakes. He goes on to say, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy and between clean and unclean, that ye may teach the children of Yasharal all the statutes which Yahuwah hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. So the Most High is saying to Aaron, you have the responsibility of teaching the, the, the nation of Yasharal the statutes that are coming from my mouth through to Moses to you. And so because you need to maintain your sense of level-headedness and your sense of reason and wit about you, when you're ministering in the temple, you cannot afford to be um, under the influence of any spirits, anything that's going to cause you to have a lapse in judgment, which apparently that must have been what happened with his sons, or the Most High would not have mentioned this at this particular time. Perhaps they were under the influence of strong drink and they made a lapse in judgment or they made just made a mistake and it cost them it cost them their lives this concept of strange this concept of strange fire or that which was not recognizable by the most high i'd like to delve a little bit deeper into that we read in genesis chapter 18 starting at verse 17 and yahuwah said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of Yahuwah to do justice and judgment, that Yahuwah may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So we see here, in this in the verse of scripture that the most high is indicating that he knows abraham abraham is no stranger so stranger here in this instance is the opposite of knowing stranger zor in the hebrew is the opposite of yada which is the hebrew for to know yada which is strong's it's h3043 yada and it means know, known, knowledge, to perceive, to understand, an acquaintance, to declare, and it also is translated as to teach. 
And as you look here at the screen where it shows you all of the different ways in which the word is used in the scriptures, we see that it means to know or to learn to know, to perceive and see, to find out and discern, to discriminate, distinguish, to know by experience is in to um, to know is in coming to know each other through marriage by experience with each other and becoming one with each other, to recognize and to admit, to confess, to consider, to be acquainted with, to know a person um, carnally is that a man knows a woman. And also to be made known or to make oneself known. This, these, these are the definitions of the ways in which the word yada is used in the scriptures. And so we see from the scriptures that are given, that's given here that the Most High knew Abraham. He had an intimate relationship with Abraham, knew him. He was known of Abraham and knew Abraham intimately. So Abraham was no stranger. So that who is a stranger, the person who is a stranger before the Most High is the person who is outside of the covenant, who is outside of personal knowledge and personal experience with the Most High. So to be a stranger is to be that which is separate and apart and not intimate, not one with the Most High. And also, by comparison, strange fire then is that which is not a part of the original fire of the Most High. And we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. Nadab and Abihu offered up before the Most High something that was unrecognizable to him. It was something that he didn't establish. He did not ignite this fire. He only wanted offered up to him what he ignited so that it could be offered back to him. And so you have to think about this fire, this fire that's been ignited. And, and where do we see the concept of fire in the scriptures? Let's take a look at Exodus chapter 13. And it reads, And Yahuwah went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and led them, by, led them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire and gave them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So the Most High himself, most likely in the form of his mighty right hand, his son, was with the people, was with our ancestors in the wilderness. And in the daytime, a pillar of a cloud, and by night, a pillar of fire. Could this be the same fire that came that and it presented itself in the tabernacle and was the source of the sacrifice? Could it be that it was this fire that was necessary to be joined with the incense in order to be a sweet smelling savor before the Most High? Incense in the scripture represents the prayers of the saints or the prayers of those who are part of the congregation of Yasharal. And so what I'm seeing in the scripture here is that in order for our prayers to be received before the Most High, they have to be mixed with fire. They, at least in the context of being offered in the, in the in the tabernacle here in the Old Testament, so it was necessary that the fire that the Most High ignited be joined with the incense, which represents the prayers of the congregation, to be accepted before the Most High. Nadab and Abihu mixed the incense with a fire that the Most High did not ignite. Now, if the fire that the Most High ignited was himself, or it, or in, the, in essence is his son, who is the express image of his person, then what we see here is Yahushua Jesus in the Old Testament being that pillar of fire and that pillar of cloud and being the mercy and the grace and the covering for the people being the light for the people, being everything that the people needed, the Most High shedding his grace on the people through his son. Okay, so if that's the case, what we see here is these two priests offering up prayers unto the Most High by a way that's not the way. The fire that was, that was to be used to offer up prayers unto the Most High was the fire of Messiah. It was the fire of his grace the fire of his sacrifice, the fire of his holiness. And any other fire is a thief and a robber, and it's people trying to approach unto the Most High 
another way. And any who try to approach unto the Most High another way, they'll find a similar fate. They'll be destroyed because there is no other way to the Father but by Messiah. So you could say that the equivalent to offering up strange fire in this dispensation or during this time that we find ourselves is trying to approach unto the Father by a way that's separate and apart from the Son. It cannot be done without destruction. You cannot approach unto a holy, holy, holy Elohim, a holy Father, without the lens, without the filter, without the door, without the gate, without the grace and the blood of our Messiah. He is the fire that cleanses us and washes us from our sins. And without that cleansing fire, without the fire of his sacrifice, we have no way to approach unto the Father. So we cannot offer up unto the Father strange fire by trying to uh, approach unto him in our own righteousness, in our own holiness, in our own quote-unquote good works, or by some other way, worshiping the ancestors, or through Hotep, or through um, Simon Toko, or through some other way, some other mechanism, or some other mean. Messiah said, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. So he is the way, the only way. He is the authentic fire of the Most High that when mixed with the prayers or the incense of the saints presents a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of our Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness to us. And thank you for giving us that fire that guards us by night and the cloud to guard us by day. That cloud is still with us and that fire has not gone out. He is our Messiah. He is our master. And we are so thankful. We're so thankful to him for all that he does for us and all that he has done in spite of us. Well, thank you for joining me once again for another Torah tidbit. And um, I hope that the Most High uses what we've discussed today to minister to your heart. And I just pray that we would all approach unto the Father by the right way, the true and living way, which is the Son of the Father, Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach. May the Most High bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. May you be blessed in your going out and in your coming in forevermore. In Yahusha, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Mm-hmm.